Oh, hi. <laughs> Pardon me, I didn't know the the webcam was going on. Anyways, I'm a gay man, and I was raised around Christianity, uh, specifically Church of Christ, which happens to be uh, an offshoot from out of the Baptist Church in Alabama many years ago. So, uh, sounding alert, redneck. And so, <laughs> Bible Belt, Midwest, whatever. So, uh, I am native to California, so I was able to establish some type of cultural beginnings with myself early on. Music, camps, traveling, missions, Germany, Mexico, mini farms, uh, in a hogan with alcoholic Navajo Indians, specifically mini farms. Uh, Arizona. It's a Navajo Indian reservation. And, you know, I've helped build a church in Mexico, taught English using the Bible. It's an English text in Germany. Went to Ukraine, was a, a mime dancer, and other places like the red light district with prostitutes and people dying of AIDS in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. So while I've been an attention whore because I'm gay, I'm also Leo, I'm also a little bipolar. <laughs> So I have this look as well, and all my life in Christianity and church, I was very daunted by the reality that one day I would move to Los Angeles. But before I could gain the courage to get to LA and live my bliss, correct, because now I'm working on a PhD in general psychology with an emphasis in government and policy. Oh no, that was my public administration master's but it's a concentration in cognition, my psychology PhD. I'm a little wrapped up in a lot of different things. There's a lot of moving parts right now because uh, being a gay man has been filled with just this unrelentless search, uh, looks, many hard-ons, and uh, prestige. And now that I'm living in LA, I think that building friendships and solid relationships that are safe is above all the most important because of city life. As a child, uh, I was taught to uh, hate myself and to have guilt. I was taught that I was born with original sin. Recently, I've been taught that I am born with nobility. And in 2018, I don't think we need to be responsible for Adam and Eve's sin in the Garden of Eden. Nor should we put limitations on our creativity and the pathways we take with our sweet destinies to become more cultured and to understand more anthropology, specifically anthropological sociology, because my emphasis is social sciences. But in anthro, we have culture, tradition. And one of the things that we're finding in modern day contemporary beyond millennial society, which means it's 2018, is the new traditions of LGBTQ for questioning lesbian, gay, transsexual, uh, LGBT, transgender, and Q for questioning. Q is not for queer. Q is for questioning. And we are a bit of missionaries ourselves in the gay community, right? And converters and We've welcomed married men, straight men, bisexual men, bi curious men. This has been a heartache for me because though I haven't always known that the men were married, I had to come to terms with being a family wrecker, wrecking families. And so through the darkness of methamphetamines, male prostitution, hustling in Washington, D.C., San Francisco, Palm Springs, different gay meccas where I've lived. Never West Hollywood, interestingly, and I live in LA. There are needs that you have for your own social transformative change. And so I've been able to gather my emotions and all the moving parts and see that I need alchemy, I need change. And becoming an alchemist for yourself is about self-governance and becoming your own self-alchemist and owning it and taking social responsibility for your behavior 
you're barebacking. And that has happened, and I've had a lot of scares around HIV and AIDS. LA being the highest and fastest carrier of STDs in the country, with the largest democratic headquarters in the world, the country, and the largest LGBT center in the world, with a lot of thriving gay men, Jewish men, in the entertainment industry, I have a problem that STDs are the highest in this city. So inasmuch as I believe in the liberated mind, I find myself searching for sex always, but it's a predatory, pedophilic, and pornographic society, so I have needed to become very wise in my pickings and my hookups and my booty calls. Booty calls. I've been a booty man-boy. But having been nominated as Mr. Nude Palm Springs many years ago, I was very muscular. You can do uh, some search under Social Alchemy Project and find my modeling portrait supplementations and my musculature, basically my showing off. But all of it was vanity. I've had boyfriends, I've had engagements, fiancés, I've had knives put over my head, well one knife. I've had, that wasn't even part of role-playing or kink or fetish, it was actually violence. I was also raped by coercion. That means you're taken out to very expensive dinners and you're coerced, you're persuaded, you're convinced that you're all oh, safe. And I wasn't. The man had grew, to, grew to tell me that, you know, just a lot of flattery, men. A lot of flattery around the Hollywood Hills. Barbara Eden. Property next door to Barbara Streisand behind the Hearst Castle, places where I had learned to live. I don't need to, with effort, make myself cry and to tear up to show some type of dramatist persona or some type of iconic star image for you to fall in love with because I do acting. This video portrayal is for somebody that I'd like to go on a date with. Oh, I've worked at the White House. I have a lot of things that masturbate my ego. But I have found myself in a very dark place in as much as I have become a self-sustaining gentleman. With my hoodie, not much of a gentleman, right? I have become a self-created man. Uh, the name is Tyler Lord Hamilton. But I still have darkness in as much as I have moved over on the slate. You know, sometimes we can't quite clean the slate, but we shook and move over. And no matter what your faith is, you don't even need a spiritual practice. In fact, the older I get, I prefer agnostic and atheists. You seem to be able to know how to talk to me. And there is a socio-intellectuality that I am very aligned with with men that are able to have a conversation with me because of my education in poli-sci, public administration, government policy, 4.0 in criminal justice, don't ask me what I've learned, a sociology degree, and now um, a PhD in psychology. I want Los Angeles to be my home, although I don't know if I'm going to move back to Santa Barbara, or back up the coast of San Luis Obispo where Fred Astaire's family is settled. You know the drill. Charlie Chaplin, Marion Davies, Randolph Hearst, Dolly Parton actually has spent some time, about three months, solid visiting San Luis Obispo, I think, to buy property. Harrison Ford, you know the drill. So it doesn't have the established cultural needs that Los Angeles has. But I love the coast because it's pristine and it's elegant. That's what I've always wanted. I know that having worked at the Ritz Carlton on Rancho Mirage in the Coachella Valley, I used to live in Palm Desert, they taught us, I was a butler, and my team also in banquets did parties for Elizabeth Taylor when she was living, and so the list goes on, Janet Jackson at club level, 
for face work. No one knows that Janet Jackson had face work. Strangely, with black skin, you hold in oils. But yes, Janet Jackson was at club level. And uh, Superman, Christopher Reeve, because of his accident, he came there to rest. And our staff had served him. I'd open the door also for Sonny and Mary Bono about a month before Sonny Bono had died. I also was dating Sonny Bono's best friend. So I have a lot that uh, I can quickly mindfuck people over and I can scare them off because I don't want to get used solely for my body. I'm age 47. I've lost a lot of lean body mass because of Tina. Party favors. So in this dark space, although I have a great CV, curriculum vitae, much lengthier than your resume, this is for teachers, peer review, uh, journals, articles I'm working on, a list of workshops and seminars that I have been involved with and I have also attended. So my CV is really competitive. But I'm not happy. Oh, by the way, this is the James Dean impression. <laughs> it's my James Dean. It's very psychotic, I know. You know it, this doesn't really work. My, I'm trying to do my little Armenian uh, thing, because I'm partially Armenian. I come from Armenian aristocracy, Armenian empire. On mother's side and the father's side is Sir Isaac Newton lineage, so um, I have become very convoluted and verbose and very not stuck up because I believe in loving the unlovely and I believe in becoming friends with the friendless because the more I've pursued perfection I learned that I'm not perfect and I'm not going to be perfect and if I admit that I'm not perfect I find that I do have perfection I'm pretty perfect and that's good to know but at New World Christ Church, the church that I'm working on pastoring, it is no perfect people allowed, come as you are. Or come as you are, no perfect people allowed. And I also know that God is not... God, whatever your belief in God is, God is never too late, but he's last minute. And he makes you very in need to slip out of loneliness. Having had a lot of homoerotic vampire energy among men and getting what I've wanted, like hopefully you have. I'm the one who's mind fucked. And so, this is my cross. I've been baptized twice of water immersion. You can go ahead and find that on YouTube as well. But I'd like to read a scripture because in over 400 of my videos, I'm not opening up the Bible because people shit on the Bible, burn the Bible, spit on the Bible, and even piss on the Bible. And for gay men that can love drinking piss during party and play, PNP, methamphetamines, ching, uh, they would not drink their piss after they pissed on the Bible because they're so repulsed by conviction and the ultimate sacrifice of ourself to change, to find our own alchemy. Again, this is about not being a little boy, it's about being a big boy and growing up and not being a whore anymore. And so we say, abide with me. Abide with the beautiful and good things, the love that is selfless, the friendless, the imperfect people. But the brain still says, I need security, I need wealth, I need education, I need my status markers. Listen, I've done the Jaguars, I've done the Mercedes, 
I love Mercedes, I love Chad, but Chad leaks, there's too many leaks in the engine, all this stuff. Now I'm doing the Mazda Miata thing. No, the car is not red. So, my last Miata I got in a car accident and I almost died. But this whole need for you men, or the man that I'm seeking a date for from Adam for Adam, who is also pursuing acting, the soul has to be very raw, and you have to be in touch with your social psychology, where you are in society, and how things pick at you. And you know, sometimes you get agitated and angry with people. And this is really the working of a perfect system that was created by love. Listen, your creator can be the doorknob from AA, your higher power, right? Your God could be your God in you because you have an ego that will not rest. Or your God might be at the Church of Scientology, celebrity since I was. Mr. Tom Cruise. However you see yourself with your purpose or your spiritual practice or your Buddhism or your Christianity. In Hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 and 6, this is what the word says. Because remember, no matter how agitated you get because you're losing control, and you're realizing the older you get, you don't have the control you had. And a third of your life is about building you and accumulating and status markers. But a very short part of your life, maybe the 5 or 10% when you're close to death, you start un unveiling. You start stripping yourself. Oh, this is the body. I'm working on my nutrition intervention routines because I'm trying to put back on my lean body mass, not to flirt with uh, diseases and barebacking, like we've all done, but to be a pillar in my own social psychology and to be able to get out and to know I am in society and I'm psychologically put together because I feel good, therefore I look good and I'm a strong man and not a pathetic little girly boy or a sissy, which I am. I'm also a fornicator too. I believe in sex before marriage. So if you're going to buy something, it's going to be on the rack for sale, so it's public, right? And someone needs to take it off, and if they're going to purchase and wear it, they need to try it out. Same thing with sex, right? But you know, we want to abide in him, and that is really establishing solid friendships, whether you're in a city or not. But as I'm saying, in the agitation of yourself and losing control, and not liking certain people because you see a part of yourself in them. And it's not that we're more different than people, and people are more different than us, but it's really about the familiarities and the similarities that we have with people. And so we want to unite to ignite, because this is what we're meant to be, non-separatists. We are meant to be not isolationists, even though I do believe in isolationist politics, not getting American hands into other people's diplomacies and trying to control them with our money. Because the American dream and our money is a fucking nightmare for most people. So get off of it. We have to let people be. We have to enjoy their culture enjoy their sexual, exploratory positivism, psychological positivism through sexuality. And so many men do this, because this doesn't work for us. It hasn't worked for me, because I had to leave Christian faith to find my heart's faith, because the church taught me the heart is deceptively wicked, who could know it. The heart is born noble, we're born with good. So I had to leave the guilt and the hate and the limitations of my creativity, the church. Because it made me agitated and I couldn't take any control over the deacons or the elders because I would never be promoted, because I'm not a straight man and I don't have the wife 
and the children. But I could be nominated as a whore, as Mr. New Palm Springs at CCBC, Cathedral City Boys Club, and I had access to half a dozen resorts through warm sands, through the desert, because I was a hottie, and I could go in and out and enjoy these clothing optional gay men resorts because of my look, because of my vanity, and because of self glorification, which was all part of me seeking self-esteem. That was my process. And I would have pa passes to go anywhere. Not a guest pass, not a visitor's pass, but a pass where I could go in and out of any club, whether it be Palm Springs or Key West, because the owners of these gay resorts would sleep with me, and I would let them sleep with me for free because I thought one of them maybe would break up with their husbands or divorce their husbands and become my lover. And then I would just be rich fag America, right? This is of my soul. Of my soul. It's also of the social cognition and gaining a sense of self-efficacy to put on a condom and to practice safe sex. But to look at my soul's affection and where the affections of my soul go to, that creates a heavy heart. Regardless of guilt, regardless of believing that I have a deceptively wicked heart, or having limitations on my creativity or being baptized a third time because of guilt. So the agitation and needing God to abide with me, that was all I needed, was to drop to my legs and stop getting coked up and say, I've been bad. I need help because I'm lost. And everybody that's in my life is pissing the shit out of my diarrhea. <laughs> pissing the shit out of my diarrhea, that means they must be pissing out my ass, correct? So I can't be a condom. Pissing out my diarrhea. The piss kind of looks as a laxative, no, an enema, and then you piss everything out and it comes with your diarrhea because you have hemorrhoids it also comes with blood and so you're freaking out every other year because you keep barebacking because you're a sex addict gentlemen like I said earlier you can get everything you wanted because Lucifer has a hot muscular body and he makes dreams come true and then at the end of the day he shoots his fire come up your ass and you go around telling everybody you're not lost. You're fine and you're not. Because you're telling a lie from hell. And you're going to smell the smoke for a very long time because you don't know how to hone in your sacred sexuality. You don't know anything about your own self-alchemy. And you are unchurched. So the people in your life, enough of me being the attention whore with my story. Because from here on out, everybody can buy the autobiographical sketch, correct? Or maybe it'll just be free at Wikipedia. So the agitation you have around people, maybe myself, because I'm talking about the Christ mind. Okay, I'm not talking about the blood. I'm not talking about the gospel fulfilled. Just talking about Christ mind and abiding in that. So you have these agitations because this is what God has planned. He's planned for trees to be planted on each side of you. And when the wind blows and when the storm is making you stormy weather, your branches on your trees are commingling with other branches. And it's happening on both sides of you. Because you're in the woods, and you're a tree, and you're planted with roots into the land, and you cannot escape what you have to go through, because karma is a bitch, because it knows your address. You've heard this before. And you have got to walk through the manure to get to the flowers. You've heard that before, too. And so the providence, the fate is that there are people that you can't murder. You can't escape these relationships unless you're cold and you don't return the messages, and that's not in your heart because you want to be a man of love and you're needy for friends. 
You can't commit suicide, right? Because you're just going to have to come back and deal with your pissing out the diarrhea, right? So there's lessons we have to learn as men, correct? One lesson we've learned together as gay men in a subculture that, in fact, is kind of isolating and it's limiting, isn't it? The lesson that you've learned is to come out of your closet, to tell your wife you've been playing with Tyler Lord Hamilton. Whether you share my body with her in your marriage, I don't know. If you did, I don't remember. Everything is very surreal. And I'm trying to forgive self, be compassionate to self, and be empathetic to self. And to turn inside to the breath and find that there's no need to love anybody or to be loved by anybody before I begin to love self. Now, I'm speaking again in first person, and I mean to put this back into you. We're really approaching a 30-minute video, and I have not even read Hebrews 13, two verses. So let me go ahead and get cracked down to this and not speak with such a good conscience because I'm really a crackhead that I am not. But I want to be very well... <laughs> to put in my dentures, I can't speak. <laughs> I want to be very well-pleasing to you in your spirit. And for the man that I'd like to meet up with, the soul. Because that is what he focuses on in his profile on Adam for Adam. So Hebrews 13, chapter 5. Let your conduct, let your behavior in the social behavioral sciences, gentlemen, I'm going to speak social sciences if I'm reading scripture. I'm not going to keep you scripture and then theology and doctrine and dogma and bullshit from a seminary. I'm not going there. I will speak social sciences in lieu of what we read here. So, we're very visionary futurist on this, aren't we? We're not like dark ages when it was written. Correct? Correct. So, let your social and behavioral sciences, your conduct, your sex maybe, or your whoredom be without covet, covetousness, coveting, wanting, envy, jealousy. To not be fine with self, but to think that, you've heard this, the grass is green on the other side of the fence, and you're looking at somebody's na you know, neighborhood, and you're saying, oh, it's good over there too, love Bel Air, you name the drill. What neighborhood do you like? I'll sign you up if I can. I know some realtors. But you look around and you see other people living the way you want to live. And you have not learned to have the goodness in your heart. Amplified, even though it's there. Your Holy Spirit, your Christ mind, whatever. To create your life. And to man up not be a pitiful faggot. Correct? Correct. I'm not speaking to cocksuckers, I'm just speaking fag. Whatever that means to you, let that rule over you. As stereotype, because we have stereotypes still. Look at LGBT, that's all stereotype right there. So, don't be of covetness. Don't covet others. By shifting in your conduct and shifting in your behavior and giving up your morals because you want them to like you and you want, sociology 1A, group solidarity, correct? And at the end you find out that you are lost in the clouds, correct? And the next day you have to be responsible but you've lost tons of weight and you look like a goddamn fucking, a fucking motherfucking tweaker. And there's no future in that. There's a good few months, a good few years. But I lost so much. I've been in jail twice. And I come from cream of the crop. There's domestic violence there, but a lot of educated people are in my family. So chapter 13 says, let your conduct, and remember, I don't preach. I give talks and I give lectures. And I pump them into my efficacious talks and conversations, or the New World Christ Church, or the Tyler Hamilton 
University College of Social and Behavioral Sciences, or the Private Practice Social Alchemy Project, and or Private Practice, which is called the Giant Balloon. And in my private practice with gay men, I try to reduce STDs by looking at our drug use, because there are direct correlations in the social research that has been done. And specifically, I'm looking at the trigger drug, the staple drug, and that is the sex drug, and that's meth. Might not be a choice of drugs, you might be an alky, whatever. Alcoholism and all drugs. Marvelous drugs. So, after your drugs, this is where we're looking at. We're looking at what was our conduct, and are we honorable right now, or do we feel lost, and do we hate ourselves? Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content. Be cool. Be chill. Hey, smoke weed, right? Be content with such things as you have. We all have different blessings. You don't need to go around robbing people's blessings. You don't need to go around being a thief. Listen, Los Angeles has the highest level of sophisticated crime that I have found from after traveling the world. Because of the culture of narcissism and celebrity and fame and fortune. So for he himself has said, that means your creator, your teacher. He said, quote, I will never leave you or forsake you, get rid of you, throw you away, abandon and betray you. Listen, I'm an expert on the betrayal of family, correct? We all have some family insanity. But when I came into the gay subculture, my quote-unquote fictive kin, I've adopted them, I've done work, raised money for AIDS through gay prides and singing as Ashley Victoria, or Tyler Lord Hamilton, doing my whole Johnny Depp look, in brotherly love, because we're sucking dick at the same time, with all the trannies. But all my life, I've been trying to prove that I'm a top and I'm an alpha male. But somehow, I have to be content, right? And not think that I have to prove myself. Because he says that he will never leave or forsake you. I want you to see yourself in my shoes. I want to speak to people that get it. As I've said before, never trust anybody that hasn't been through anything. So be open. To people that are not perfect. Correct? Correct. So that's having a good soul. Close this, right? We're just talking basic fortitude of humanistic, correct? You know, end the culture of war. You know, if you're going to be a president of the United States, make sure you're not hiring prostitutes. Right. I'm not speaking moral compass, because I'm not speaking rhetoric. I'm speaking you and your consciousness, right? And what you are fine with, okay? In lieu of blessings being cut off from you and blessings that maybe you have thieved to get or coveting. In the Old Testament, coveting and envy and jealousy, all three, it's a threefold criminological setup for you. In the Old Testament, it discusses that these things lead to murder. Okay? So, your God will not leave you or forsake you. So you must boldly say, in your gay community, that the Lord is your helper. He brings you enlightenment. That could be your Buddha, okay, Muhammad, your Dalai Lama, Deepak Chopra. It could be it could be Charles Manson, okay? Find out what you're fine with, okay? But I don't think it is Charles Manson. But I want you to be you, to be yourself. And tell people that the Lord is your helper and you will not fear. You don't have to be fearful of being with less or be afraid of homelessness because of the housing unprecedented landlords out there.
you will not fear the inevitable. You will not fear the unknown. Now, a lot of you gay men out there are clingy. Right? Who does not want to marry a lawyer? Correct? Who doesn't want to marry a doctor? Correct? Who doesn't want to marry Tom Cruise? Correct? Who does not want to marry somebody that has the power and you will let them control your mind because you have three houses? Who does not want earthly privilege? But these things are fleeting, temporal, and transitory. This comes out in my lectures and my talks all the time, gentlemen. And it puts you in the lap of your own consciousness for change. And if you want to change the world, what? You, talk, you, you start with yourself, Gandhi. And as Aristotle said, to know thyself is to know God. Feel that you need to know you and discover what you're fine with. So you will not fear what can man do to you. This is a spoken word of faith. And you have to consider the outcome, the social constructivism, which you've constructed sociologically with your fictive kin, your brothers, and have the consideration of what that social constructivism outcome is and conduct. Let's put this away. We're done. So I want to share something with you. Abide with me fast Falls the eventide, the darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide when other helpers fail and come. Comforts flee. Comforts, the your drugs and your sex. Help of the helpless. Lord, abide with me. Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Everything's temporal, right? This earth. Change, ah, alchemy, and decay, death, in all around I see. Oh, thou who change not, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Like thyself, my guide and stay can be through cloud and sunshine. Lord, abide with me. I fear no foe.
with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. No agitation because of the trees and the limbs, correct? Well is death sting, well grave thy victory. I'll triumph still in thou abide with me. Hold thy cross before my closing eyes shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Not because you're blowing clouds in the air and the clouds, gentlemen, but a sober mind, being emotionally sober, right? You know the drill. This too will pass to the next indicated step. Heaven's morning breaks and earth is vain, so it is. In life, in death, O oh Lord, abide with me. So, I share this teaching because I'm gay and uh, I believe in the political mantra that we all have is to love and be loved by same gender. Of age, consensual, thank you very much. But I want you all to really take heed to that. We have a lot of lost men in the gay community. And even if you don't think this is pertinent for you, there are very much so men that have lost focus too much. And they need you to hold their hands. They need their friendship from you, not their cock all the time. And gentlemen, don't be afraid to research your own social alchemy by looking at proverbs from Chinese, from gurus, Swamiji's, things that are very hidden in the knowledges of a pure divine alchemy and God via Sanskrits from India, or Proverbs and Psalms from the Holy Bible. I hope to gain a very touching soul based in the depth of these truths date. I've said this before. Do not value one another based on zeros, right? What's in their account. But place value on if your brothers in your community that you would die for, right? Because you believe in globalization of homosexuality, you believe in gender politics, you, you know the drill, you're educated. That you are an ambassador for young boys that are underage, that want to become porn stars, and they're walking the streets of Santa Monica Boulevard, and they're looking for a rich daddy because they're smart little hustler or twinks, because their mother in Hollywood needs a fix of heroin. That's happening. In as much as Hollywood is becoming very policed, right? Hollywood will always be fab, right? For the liberated mind, for your own social justice prevalence and your democracy promotion without force, okay? And it'll have its seedy and its skanky times for you. 
But when you are alone and afraid and restless because you're a sex addict, don't be against putting on your hoodie and knowing that you are safe with your God. He's never, ever going to let you down. Gentlemen, find your hiding place because your comforts will fail you. Your booty calls will fail you. They're transitory and fleeting and temporal. And the showing off and the stand and flirt or the stand and model or the flaunt and flirt. Listen, my ex-boyfriend was like this with the owners of Flaunt magazine. And I was there in Palm Springs doing any drugs I wanted to do. Okay, And everybody from West Hollywood was coming to me and my lover's home that became a little bed and breakfast in Palm Springs. And our friends had no need to bring anything except their hot muscular bodies because we had all the drugs. Gentlemen, the goods were damaged, even up in St. Regis residency. Where well, my lover there, second, third, or fourth, or fifth, or eighth lover, had the best cocaine in the world in his safe, told me I was better than Brad Pitt and threw me out on the street, made me nearly homeless. And the fucker had AIDS and I didn't, and all of his goods were damaged. Gentlemen, the flattery is superficial. It all comes to an end, and we're half to be ready to be with our maker. I'm not saying be ready for judgment day. I don't teach that. And I'm not going to teach, uh, you've got to be ready to meet your maker. No, you've already met him. He's within you. Damn it. So God is not out there solely. He's inside you. Go into yourself. Silence yourself here and here. And within 15 minutes, you're going to feel the bubbling of your soul. I believe this. And I believe this, this spiritual practice can help our young men be more aware of reducing STDs and looking at the losses of psychological masculinity. And as replacement of that, we lose inhibitions using our dope. And we're dealing with being family wreckers with straight men. This is not the hiding place of a gay community, gentlemen. And that has become the counterfeit comfort. And that will fail you. Okay? Whether it's the betrayal of family or the betrayal of men with men. The favorite verse. I'm going to see it, sing it again. Abide with me, him. Listen to you. This is these are your words for you to sing. To sing. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power. Foil reflects it back to them, right? So you're safe. You don't have to fear what man can do to you. Correct? Who like thyself, my guide and stay can be. Your consciousness is your guide. That is your soul. And that is the staying where you get to be. You get to be where you are. You don't have to commit suicide. You don't have to murder people that are agitating you with your branches and your trees. 
through cloud and sunshine, Lord, abide with me. I love you, and I wish you love and a partner that you can devote your life to and their dream and they can devote their life to your dream. I need thy presence every passing hour. Now listen, that presence is within you and within your lover, okay? And your companionship. So good luck, men that are dating out there and practice safe sex. And Adam for Adam. Meet your lover. Ciao. Don't